Hello, today I'm going to be building a Z80 based computer. It comes as a kit made of several different circuit boards and there's a bunch of instructions on the internet. So what I've done is printed out as much of the instructions as I can find and I'm going to start putting it together. It seems fairly simple construction, there's just lots of through hole components and I'm going to use my fantastic soldering iron that I bought the other week. This video isn't a set of instructions, it's more the kind of video that I would have liked to have watched before making mine, just to see how it fits together. So, let's get on. This computer is made from several sections. There's a big backplane board that everything connects to, and then these smaller boards that have the functionality. So they do things like there's a compact flash board, the CPU goes on one of them, its RAM goes on a different one, and it means everything's all sectioned off. It's all through hole components, so it's quite easy to solder. There's just, as you can see, quite a lot of soldering. And it all uses these little pins to fit into the sockets that go on the back plane. So my first job is to solder everything together. Here I am putting the back plane together. Now it's a bit fiddly, which is why I did it as a first thing. It's also the most soldering that I had to do in one go. There's a lot of little sockets that fit in neat rows, and if you look, they're not very neat at the moment. So what I need to do is line them up using this little trick that I found on the internet, and then that just holds everything still whilst I turn the board over, and then I can start soldering. This kit contains so much soldering. I mean, look at all of these pins that need doing, and each one needs to be correct. It's not very difficult though, you just have to be really careful and methodical. So here's a finished board with all the extra components added. Let's give it some power, turn it on, and see what happens. That green LED should switch on. Oh dear. Oh, this isn't working at all. This I kind of expected. You know, I've just done all that soldering, and it's possible something's not right. Later it turns out I've just not read the instructions completely. But what I'm doing now is starting to troubleshoot, and this is a vital thing that you need to be doing all the time whilst building this. Checking things that are connected properly, checking you've not bridged any solder points or anything. The last thing you want to do is put in something like your CPU card and have the chip in backwards and it explodes and lets out all its magic smoke. So, having probed it and understood it, I finally realised that this jumper was missing so now, if I switch on the power, it should start doing something. Like, this LED should come on. Now I've built the back plane, I need to build all the cards that go onto it. So we have a serial board that communicates with the PC. We've got a clock board. We've got the ROM, which contains any code. Then there's a CPU board with the Z80 on it. There's a compact flash board that takes a CF card. Unfortunately, they've soldered the CF connector on for me already. I don't really want to have to do that myself. Finally, 64K of RAM. I think one of the most frustrating parts of building this was the solder I was using. I think I bought lead free, and either I've not got my iron hot enough or I've just not yet learnt the technique. But it just doesn't seem to flow like it should do. It would either blob together and shot out pins next to each other, or it would form sort of cold looking solder joints that I had to keep going over and reflowing. But then, when I did check it, it looked fine, so I'm not quite sure what was going on with that. What I liked about the construction of this kit though is that all the chips come in sockets. So it's really easy to build. You don't risk burning out a chip using some ham-fisted soldering technique that you're learning whilst building it. You can just fit all the sockets and then turn it over and start soldering. A technique I used to make the soldering easier and to make sure the sockets line up neatly was to solder the corners of them and then to turn the board back over, check alignment and then start soldering if everything was in neatly.
And here we go. Here's the finished thing. All the soldering is complete. I need to put the chips in, but I'm going to do that later after doing some basic tests. What I'll do now is just give everything a good visual inspection to check there's no shorted out solder joints and that everything is in where it should go and I've not accidentally fitted something backwards. Fortunately there's not many polarised items on this. I think there's like one diode and then the chip sockets. I just have to put the chips in the way it says on the silk screen. Even though I'm building a computer, this one doesn't have a screen or a keyboard or any speakers. So when I first switch it on, I have no visual way of knowing if it's working or not. So one of the most useful pieces of equipment that I've got is my oscilloscope. I've also got a logic analyzer, which I can then use to see what the CPU itself is actually doing. A CPU doesn't work without its clock, so this first board is the clock board. I've just switched it on and what I'm doing first is checking that none of these chips are hot because if they are it's likely that they're in backwards or I've shorted something out. Now I'm happy that the magic smoke isn't going to escape from anything. What I'm starting to do is just probe around the different points on the board just to see what signals I can find. What I'm generally looking for is square waves of some sort because that should indicate that there's a clock and if there isn't a clock the CPU won't even start doing anything at all. So this is the most important board to get working first. And there we go, there's the clock, running at 7 MHz. What I didn't bother recording was quite a lot of troubleshooting that I had to do to get to this point. I could get the board to turn on and I could read signals on all the different data lines. So I was fairly certain the CPU was executing instructions, but through the serial connection I wasn't seeing any data at all, not even garbled information showing maybe there was a connection at the wrong speed. What you see me doing here is using my logic analyzer to try and understand what's happening at all with the machine. The back plane has transmit and receive lines that the serial data travels along and I've connected to those to see what's on there. And as you can see, it is actually working. I think the problem I was having was that maybe some jumpers were set wrong on the RAM and ROM boards and then that I'd not properly configured my USB serial dongle. So here we go, this is the first actual test of me trying it out for real. So I've connected Minicom, I'm just going through setting up some serial connection settings and then hopefully I should see on the screen the computer itself. And there we go, it's working, look, I've finished it. It actually functions. I've built a computer from all its component parts. I wasn't quite sure whether it'd even work at the end of it. And it does. This is awesome. So now in future videos, I'm going to explore this a bit. You can run CPM on this, which is what we had before DOS. And I think that might be quite fun to play with. For now, let's just try the most simple computer program that you can ever possibly type in, just to see what happens. <laughs> 